So we are in the great side shot workshop right now. Um, this is where all the magic happens and we're about to head out on the hunt. We've got the impact set up with the new slug liners and we've got different weight Nielsen slugs. So we are just setting up a couple guns here. My gun is shooting at like standard settings with the 23 grain slugs at about 920 feet per second. Justin has set up his gun and um, changed a few things with the, on the hammer and the regulator and he's getting probably about 50 foot pounds so he's going to be shooting the heavier 27 grain slugs and he looks like he's getting some really good results with those um, and we also we're setting up the side shot gopro mount on my gun so we can get some shots through that that's a new mount um, haven't got too much experience with it so we are kind of testing it out today to see how it can do but so far it's looking really good so looks like we set up let's head out there and let's have a fantastic day out in utah shooting some rock chucks this is crazy Yeah, we might want to shoot this slug. <laughs> uh, it's just stacking them. Yeah, and this this hole was totally me. The rest of them, but that's that's the uh, 27 grain Nick Nelson ammunition at 905 feet per second. <laughs> it's gonna be just an absolute laser beam. I, yeah, 22 caliber, 50. Probably in 50 foot pound range is gonna, and I mean, I can't wait. I can't wait. This is awesome. <laughs> Dude, this is gonna be fun. So fun. The rock chucks are our main priority today, but our day starts off with some invasive Eurasian collar doves and European starlings on the farmyard roof. It's not long though before we spot some movement in a wood pile and we soon have Very chuck nice. number one. Good. This shot actually hits a little bit lower than I would have liked, but there's an explosion of lead out the back of his head, and in the end, it does the job quite well. We move in closer, and Thane takes another one with the leshy. So when the thane just shot in the head, perfect. So it's been a really frantic start to the day, really good. And this is the first time I'm actually getting to see a rock chuck up close. Um, clearly you can see it's in the rodent family. But um, yeah, kind of very similar to the dussies we get back in South Africa. Um, they like the same kind of terrain and um, it's a very similar experience hunting them. So, But I did shoot one back there, so we're going to try find it now and see if we can recover it. Unfortunately, the one that I shot with the impact fell down um, into the wood and then it must have kicked about and he's under the wood somewhere, but we're just not able to find him, unfortunately. But he's definitely been hit hard. Um, but that's a fantastic way to start the day. And, you know, it's only still early in the morning. It's our first half hour of hunting. So looks like we're going to be in for a good time. Let's keep going. Yep. This was a fair distance out, actually about 75 yards, and he doesn't even take a step. That slug opens up nicely in the skull, and it doesn't exit the other side. So, this is my first ever rock chuck. It's really cool. Kind of reminds me of a little bit of the beavers I was hunting in Patagonia. Um, same kind of fur and same kind of paws and stuff. But 
as I said, the terrain is very similar to the Dussies that we had in South Africa. So, yeah, big boy, shot him right in the head there, and um, he never even moved an inch. That slug hit him right there, looks like right below the ear, and he, he didn't move at all. So, from 75 yards, that's a, a tick on the accuracy um, capability of the slug barrel, and it looks like it hit him pretty hard. So, yeah, really happy with that. First chuck down. So you know, you, yours is probably more quiet than mine because you've got the reg set higher so that valve is closing faster. So by the time the slug leaves the barrel, the valve's already closed. Mine's like kind of overpowered for 150 bar. But this is a nice setup. That's very cool. The chucks are often found in old wood piles or in heaps of rubble. If you watch a wood pile for long enough, you're almost bound to find one. Sure enough, we soon get an opportunity and Thane brings out his 30 caliber impact and gets down to work. The 30 caliber is not only laser accurate, but it also hits like an absolute hammer. We move on to another spot and here's a fun fact for you. This is really, really close to where Napoleon Dynamite was filmed. If you've seen the movie, then you just can't look across these green fields without certain scenes coming to mind. Over there, that creek, man, I found a couple of shots on the arrowhead. Nothing on there works smooth. This shot lands a little bit low, but he pops his head up a second time and I don't let him get away again. So behind me here we've got uh, a field and uh, kind of a, a bank over here where there's a little stream running past but walking up here we really were able to see the damage that these animals cause. Right next to the, the chuck holes we've got areas of the field that are just completely flattened. So yeah we're doing the, the farmer a favor. We've had a few people on whose properties we come to shoot on come to us and shake our hands and say thank you for what we're doing. So it's a really cool feeling. And we're going to probably hang around here a bit longer and see if we can get some more here because the fact that they're doing so much damage says that they probably are more around. So we let, let's stay put for a while and, and set up and let's see if we can get some shots on camera. And that's where we're going to end this one today. But in the next episode, we'll carry on where we left off, starting with some bow fishing for carp and then heading out once again as soon as it starts to cool down and finishing off the day with an awesome few hours of chuck hunting once again. I'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching.